3.0 Duramax diesel. Now, in my experience of working on these, I have found several key areas that are common for oil leaks as well as coolant leaks. And I'm also gonna talk about the ground down there that I briefly mentioned in a 15,000 mile review video. But what I'm gonna do is I have some printed material here that's gonna help us see. And I also have this endoscope bore scope here that's gonna give us some 1080p footage um, up close of the areas that we cannot get to with a regular camera. So this thing's super cool because you could do reverse on the camera on the back side here, or you could do the front of it. And that's gonna help in a couple areas. Now let's get into it. We'll start off with the coolant leaks, which we'll start with the water pump, which is right down here. And when we go underneath it, you can see that there's like a freeze plug on the front of it. And basically what'll happen when you pressurize the cooling system over there, then you can go ahead and take a look at it closer with a, with the boroscope in this case. And then if you see some seepage out of there, some leakage, then uh, you know that that's the problem. But that is one area that we're seeing on the water pumps. The other one is at the driver's side of the radiator and typically it's right in this corner right there and it'll drip all the way down to the ground and it'll be right up where the pump is. Let's go ahead and go underneath here and you'll see the pump right there and you'll see just some drippage in that area. And what you can do is just pull this cover back a little bit to get the bore scope in there and it'll give you a closer view of the actual radiator itself and then you can see if there's coolant there then you know that that's a leaking potential or a leaking spot and again if you pressurize the cooling system with the coolant pressure tester this is going to help you locate these leaks but these are the two most common water or coolant leaks that i'm seeing on these 3.0 duramax diesel oil leaks have been a little bit more common on these and what's happening is in the beginning it seemed like it was more of like the oil pan was leaking or the front cover but over time we found that the front plug at the front of the engine has been more of the item that's leaking the most now you'll still get the oil pan leaking you'll still get the front cover leaking but this plug right here is just that that's becoming the go-to oil leak point um, on most everything so whenever i get one in for an oil leak i'm definitely going straight to that plug to check to see if it's wet around it and repair that which is just you remove it clean it reseal it reinstall it and it's a simple fix but it's tough to get to because it is buried down inside just below the water pump now on the back side of the engine that's a whole different story the rear main seal is held in place with a complete rear cover and i know a lot of people are familiar with this because there's been a lot of talk about the oil pump belt which is found just behind this cover now the rear main seal in the beginning couple years there were some uh, some pop-ups about a uh, rear main seal popping out and it was actually just dumping oil everywhere that pretty much went away with that issue that was a casting issue within the cover itself but now what we're seeing is the rear cover plate is actually leaking on the sealant side and typically it's coming down on the left side of the engine but it could be coming down from the middle but I'm seeing a lot of it from the left side. And what this is, you gotta pull the transmission off and pull this cover plate off. And when that's off, there's two more plugs on the back side that I highly suggest you reseal as well, just like the front plug that I just talked about. Transmission leaks have been all but not too common, except for this line right here. These will crack on the LZ zeros and we're finding those more and more at this point in time. And it's definitely a big job and if it goes out or cracks right there, it's bad news. So let's talk about this ground. I do have a flashlight here to help us see a little bit better. And you can see the, where those two grounds come together right there. That is a ground that gave me some grief. I had a bunch of codes popping up, a bunch of U codes, starter relay. It came down to that ground. The threads were not threaded all the way through that front cover. So that bolt was just shy of being tight and it allowed those grounds to just rattle around just enough to cause me these issues. I have not had any issues ever since then, and I had a bunch of U-codes. So if you're getting U-codes in your truck, that's one area to definitely check out.